Hi, and welcome to Python for Bioinformatics. My name is Blake Allen, and I'm going to show you how to make your first Python for Bioinformatics program in under 20 minutes. We're going to go over calculating GC content and how to make your first Python program. So if you're a little more advanced and you already know how to use Python, but you'd like to learn more, go ahead and click on the link below where I'll show you more advanced techniques in learning Python for bioinformatics. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna need is some data. If you don't have any data, you can't do any bioinformatics. But the great thing is, is there's a ton of free data online ready to go and I'm going to show you how to get a hold of that. So go ahead and open up your web browser. I use Chrome and uh, let's get started. You're going to just type in NCBI, just the letters NCBI, and that's going to take us to the National Center for Biotechnology Information. Go ahead and click on that. All right, now that we're here, there's this little search bar up here and we're, this is where we're going to get our DNA. So, I know of a gene, it's called BRCA1, and it's related to breast cancer. So, um, it's a good target to try to hit, because maybe we can solve breast cancer while we're at it. Alright, so go ahead and click on this little tab right here that says nucleotide. Um, as you can see, there's tons of other things. There's articles, books, structures, taxonomy, blah, blah, blah. We just need the nucleotide. And then up at the top, um, we got a few things here. So we got the Homo sapiens PSMC3 interacting protein. We've got the Homo sapiens BRCA1 associated protein. It is 15,000 base pairs linear DNA. Let's go for that. Um, if you just click on it, you come to this, and it's got a lot of information you can get from that but we don't want that we want to go over here um, you can just click on the fast uh, fast a right here and this is the format that we're gonna want um, conversely if you go back to the other way you can you can reach the FASTA this way right here now that we're at the fast a format which is a short header about what it is and then just the DNA all the A, C, T's, and G's. We're going to send this to a file. Let's go ahead and download that, create the file. And it should just download. Go ahead and click on Show on Finder. And now, let's move this, let's just copy this to the folder that you're going to be working in. So I've already got a folder up and ready to go. Now I'm just going to paste that in there. All right, so why don't we just replace the name, rewrite that. Um, I'm just going to change it to BRCA1. It doesn't need to be too specific because we're, we're not going to be... Um, oh, maybe I'll underscore and do BAP1. And then um, I'm just going to change the... the uh, the file handle to a text file and go use text and now we can just double click on this and we can use it cool so now we got ourselves some DNA to work with now we got the data alright so now we need to make a program and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna find what's called the GC content of this gene which is really useful for um, understanding different properties of the gene and it's going to give you a really good head start into writing Python programs. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write the program and we actually need to make a file and it's actually strangely difficult to do that in uh, Mac. <laughs> go ahead and open up text edit and make a new file and we're going to go ahead and file and just go, go click save real quick. Now, in the folder that we're working in, let me get to my folder real quick. We're going to go ahead and we're going to name this GC and we're going to do a file of .py. 
Right now, first just save it as .txt. Just, just save it as a text file. What? Oh, plain text, there we go. Save as a text file, good. Close that out, and then we're gonna change, we're gonna, once again, you can just double click on the name, or you can click on it and press enter, and then we're gonna change this to gc.py. Use py. Now if you're on a Mac, you're gonna have Python already written into it. Now let's go ahead, let's start editing this. Alright, now if you wanna if you wanna go along with me, I use Coda. Coda is a great tool for writing different programs. Coda won't have a problem opening this file. See, Coda just opens it and knows immediately that we're working in Python. This is a Python script. And I'll be working in this. But let's say you don't have Coda and you don't have a good code editor. Well, what we can do here is just go ahead and copy this real quick. And then we're going to rename this and we're going to call this GC2 and we're going to turn it back into a text file. Use text. Now you can just open that file and you can write everything in the text. And then once we're done, once all the, the Python is done, what we'll do is we'll just turn this into a Python file and we'll run it. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to leave this, leave this down here and we're going to get started. Um, actually, I can pull this out of the way because it's kind of distracting. So, let's get started on our first Python program. I'm going to increase the font size a little bit so you can see what's going on. All right. So, this is a Python script. Whenever you put one of these, Python knows that you're making a comment. So let's just go ahead. First Python program calculates GC content. And you might might have already realized this, but GC is just the number of G's and C's. You'll notice that G's and C's bond together, so that tells you some important information about what the quality of the gene is. So the first thing we need to do is we need to open our file. This is pretty easy to do in Python. We're going to give it a name. Well, first off, all you have to do is do open, make some parentheses, and then write the name of the file. Remember our name of our file, a little bit weird, but it is brca1 underscore bap1 dot text put a little comma and then we're gonna open a file put a little r there that means read this means read cool so now we've got a file that's ready to be open but we actually want to assign this to an object so we write gene equals open now whenever we want to deal with the file all we do is deal with gene now Gene can do stuff. We could print Gene if we want. Let's let's skip that step real quick. All right. So first we need to set some values. Set the values to zero. This is all the numbers of things we got. So first we got G's. Set that to zero. We got A's. Set that to zero. C's set that to zero and T's set that to zero alright so now if we print it out we're just gonna we're gonna have zero of everything now remember how in this file right here there's this header line and that's one line 
it just rolls over. But if you pull it out, you see it really is just one line right there. This tells us some inf interesting information, but we don't really want to deal with that. So what we want to do is we want to skip that, go ahead and do that. So skip the first line of header. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go gene.read line and put little parentheses and boom. We just read over that, skips it. Go ahead and save if you haven't already saved yet. All right, now we're going to do the bulk of our program. And this is, uh, this is a really great tool. It's called a for loop. And if you don't understand everything that's going on, that's okay because we're going to get more in depth later, but you're going to have a great program. So here we go. For line in Gene. And then I'm going to hit the tab. Line equals line dot lower. Basically what I'm doing there is you see how these are all uppercased. Well, sometimes you'll get uppercased and lowercase mixed in. So we're just going to turn everything to a lowercase. Press enter. Make sure that these tabs are, are correct. These, these are really important. Then we're going to add another for care in line. Put another colon. Make a, another tab. If care two equal signs G then another tab G plus equals one. Enter. Now we're going to move back one tab space so that we're in line with this if right here. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to make some more room real quick. So then if care equals a tab over a plus equals one. Move that over. If care equals c c plus equals one if care equals t t plus equals one cool so now we got stuff for every single one go ahead and move back and if you did what I did you can you can delete these extra spaces just as long as you don't have any tabs moving around in there you know you don't want any extra tabs all right all right so now we actually need to print the, the number of, of uh, GC content and uh, we do that a number of ways. So first off, let's just print the number of, of each base. So number of G's, end quote, we do this little plus sign here and we're going to turn that number into a string so we can print it. Now I'm lazy, so I'm just going to copy that four times, and we're going to change that to G, A's, C's, and T's. Actually, let's do G, C, A, T's, and then just change that. Oh, that is weird. That should not happen. Tch. That was weird. So let's get on to the last step on how to make our GC content. So now what we need to do here is just make a new object, call it GC, and this is going to be G plus C, and we're going to add this zero point. Let's make a little note here. So zero point is convert to floating point. It's important to, important to do that. And then we divide that. Just put a little divide. We're going to divide that by the A's, the T's, the C's, the G's, and we want that all converted to floating point as well. Now basically what we're doing is we're just dividing the G's and the C's over everything to get the, the ratio. And then we're going to print number or GC content 
and then we'll do string, same thing we did before, and we'll put GC right there. Go ahead and save. All right, so now let's say you were, um, let's go ahead and say you were doing this in your text file. Remember how we were doing it in a different one, text file? What you could do is it would, it would look like this if you if you followed my directions, right? That's fine. Just go ahead and save, and then you're good. Go ahead and you can copy this and paste it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how I'm saving the old text file, and then we're gonna change this to GC3, and this will be .py, and it's gonna ask you. And you go ahead and use PY. Cool. So now we're on to our last step. Step's really easy. It uh, can be tricky if you don't have someone like me showing you, but it's really easy when you do. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up Terminal. So go ahead and, if you never opened up Terminal, go ahead and go up to Spotlight and just type in Terminal. Cool. All right. So what you should see um, is something like this pop up terminal and uh, what we have to do is we're, we actually have to get to this folder so if you have this folder open um, the easiest way I know how to get to it and let me let me make this all big so you can see what's going on is you type in CD you put a space and then you can just click and drag this little folder icon right there and that works with any folder you can drag any folder right into it and then you got this really long path and you just hit enter and now we're in the folder that's that's a necessary step you can type in ls and you should see all the files that we were working with in our folder so that's good now the final step all we got to do is type python gc.py boom now we got the number of g's c's t's and a's here we got the GC content. Looks like there's slightly more GCs than there are T's and A's. What would you know? That's actually uh, that's actually uh, a property of uh, humans. We tend to have more GCs, so this is good to know. Now, if you want to try your other one, you can do Python GC3.py. Boom, we get the same thing. So that just shows you you don't need to use a fancy program like Coda like I use if you don't want to you can just straight use text files and you can make this happen I highly suggest you get something like Coda um, it's just gonna make it a lot easier in the long run there's other things like Emacs you can use and I'll show you how to use those but for now feel totally fine using a text file alright thank you so much I hope you learned a lot in this and now you should be able to calculate GC content Leave any comments down below if you have any more questions or if you would like to say how it went. And I wish you the best. Good luck with your bioinformatics. For more free tutorials and advanced training, visit howtobioinformatics.com. There I'll show you why it's an important opportunity you don't want to miss out on. And how to write programs people will literally fight to have you on their team for. So clear off your schedule for the next 15 minutes and go visit howtobioinformatics.com.